Amen, amen. Father, we thank you, Lord, that uh, we stay on top. Amen. When we hang out with you, that we don't get down. We're going through everything. No, we just rise above and stay up on top. We're the head, not the tail. We're not the going through nothing. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to talk about the day. Can anybody... Does anybody remember what the series is? How to receive from God. Though. How to receive from God. Okay, or how the word receive is the same way take. How, how do you take what is already yours? You don't have to pray, God, give it to me. How come God ain't giving it to me? No, God's not the problem. <laughs> we have to learn how to take. The word take, the word have, the word receive is all the same word. See? And so that's where we're at right now. Well, how do we receive? Well, the number one way to receive is you know what the Bible says about it. If you're praying, God, I'm praying for it. Did you know not one place did Jesus ever pray that somebody would get healed? Well, what about all them miracles and all them demons coming out and all them people got healed in Jesus when Jesus walked around here on the earth in flesh and bone body? Well, what about it? I read it several times. I cannot find one place that Jesus ever prayed for the sick. Nope. I can see a lot of places where he said, sickness go. People receive according to their faith. I see a lot of places it says that, but I don't see any place. If you can find it, text me on here and I'll admit publicly that I was wrong. <laughs> but the Word of God's not wrong. The Word of God, not one place did Jesus ever pray for the sick. He just spoke to the sickness, be gone. Demons come out, leave. You know, uh, there you go. He never did say just pray. He never he, he never just prayed. Uh, he did pray a little bit about Lazarus coming out of the tomb, but he didn't do it for his sake. He did it for the people's sake. So, uh, but he didn't pray that, Lord, now if it's your will. No, he didn't do that. So we can't go wrong uh, praying the way Jesus has taught us to pray. We can't go wrong by going by the Bible. You just can't go wrong going by the Bible. Where people make a left turn instead of the right turn is when they start doing something else other than the Bible, then they think it's the Bible. Amen. See, there's two, there's two parts to Jesus to make it work. There's the person of Jesus which is where we know he's our savior, Lord and King. Well, then there's the principles of Jesus. You have to have both. There's churches full today, probably to even overflowing some of them, that just know the, this, know about the person of Jesus, that he is the Lord, that he's the son of God, that, that, that they love him. But you have to know the principles of Jesus too. And the principle is that you confess him as Lord. Jesus is Lord. Believe in your heart. That means you can't be talked out of it. Jesus is Lord. And therefore you're saved. Amen. So without that, you just, you know, about the person of Jesus is like a historical figure, but you have to know the principles of Jesus and the main principle of Jesus is the word of God. Principles is like a tool. See, he's given us the tools. People say, well, I, I'm weak in faith. Well, that's your fault. He's given us the tools. That's like a, a, a mechanic standing in the side of the road saying, you know, uh, that radiator went out. Okay, we know the problem. What's the solution? Put a new radiator in it. Okay, so they go get a new radiator and he's still standing there. Why? No tools. See, no tools. 
A mechanic is just as good as the tools. If he doesn't have any good tools, he's not going to be able to do a good job. Just that simple. So we praise God, though, we have the right tools and know how to use them, and we use them. The tools is the tools of faith. Amen. So look in your Bible in Psalms. This is number 15. So that means there's 14 videos before this one. You can go back and look. But it's a series called How to Receive from God the Bible Way. So we're going by the Bible. We're just systematically going through the Bible till God tells us to do something else. Is systematically going through the Bible and see what God says about receive from God. Receive from the Word of God, right through the Word of God. He wrote the Bible so we could know how to receive. So we're in Psalms chapter 1, if you're taking notes, Psalms chapter 1, and it says, Blessed is the man. Wow, don't you want to know how to be blessed? Well, he's going to tell us today, you tuned into the right station. If you need to be healed, set free, delivered, uh, if you need to be saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, or financially blessed, all five, six well, guess what? You're at the right place at the right time. So blessed is the man, okay, that walketh not. Because one thing you can't do is rest right here. He's telling you how to be blessed, and he's telling you how to do it. See, what happens is, is people start like, hear the word of God today, and then they're like, and they get these foreign thoughts. What's foreign thought? A foreign thought is something other than the Word of God. And then they start thinking it's just them. See? Anytime it's coming against the Word of God, they think it's the enemy never shows up in a red suit and a pitchfork and white horns on his head. And uh, No, he never shows up like that. He shows up making you think he disguises himself, making you think it's you that wants to run away, that it's you that wants to leave. Uh, I've lived long enough to see what see people, a lot of them are dead now, but that, that run away. They're either miserable, and then the devil gets them so far away, they're so miserable, so messed up, they think they can never come back. That's, that's the way the devil does it. He gets them so far away, make, makes them think it's them that wants to run away. Or he makes them think it's God that wants them to run away. Well, God's not schizophrenic. I've got some good news for you. God's not schizophrenic. He has not changed his mind one iota. He loves you. That's right. He is... He is the Savior. That's not going to change. He hasn't changed his mind about saving you. He hasn't changed his mind about you being healed, saved, set free, delivered, and financially blessed. He has not changed his mind one iota. What's an iota? That means he ain't changed his mind one bit. Why? Because his mind and what he says is the Bible. You never have to wonder what God's thinking. He's thinking this right here, the Word of God. You never have to wonder what God is saying. He's saying right here all the time, the Bible is God talking to you. See, you're a three-part being. If you develop in your body, you ever heard someone say, well, they're developing their body and they look good, but their mind is mush. Their brain, they got a mushy mind. <laughs> well, what's that mean, you know? Uh, I remember one time I was in Central America, uh, a lot of times, but this particular time on an island preaching out there, and I was hollering this guy. He was carrying one of our keyboards in a case. He'd just pick it up and carry it. It was an island, and uh, he would take it to the house that we was staying in or take, us, take it to the room we was staying in, lock everything up. Every night he'd come and get it, bring it, and then he'd take it back up there. And I would say, mucho gracias. And somebody told me, he said, uh, bruto. And uh, that means 
Uh, I thought it meant you're very strong. No, it meant you was a big, dumb, strong guy. And every night he never even responded. He'd just pick it up and take it to the room. I said, well, tell him that I really, really appreciate it. And, and I think he's bruto and uh, like a big, dumb brute. <laughs> and, and that's what a guy, that's what this interpreter told me to say. And that the interpreter thought it was real funny when I was saying stupid stuff like that. But I learned not to trust him. Amen. So... Uh, God is saying, don't be a big, dumb, strong guy. And if you think you're a big, dumb, strong guy, get into the Word of God because the Holy Ghost will make you look like a genius. I mean, you'll be looking at stuff in the Bible and you're like, I know that had to be God because there's no way in my natural abilities am I even that smart. Amen. <laughs> See? Uh, it's, it's wonderful to, to be hooked up with God. So blessed is a man that does not walk, live in the counsel of the ungodly. So what's the ungodly? Anything to do with the enemy. So what would be the counsel of the ungodly? Well, you might as well quit. Everybody else quit. You might as well just go ahead and do sickness. Everybody else is doing sickness. You might as well go ahead and die with COVID. Everybody else die with COVID. See? But that's the counsel of the ungodly. The counsel of the ungodly is all this uh, stuff that's not, uh, contrary to the Word of God. So you don't want to go contrary to the Word of God. Amen? You still got to take care of yourself. Well, the ungodly would say, just let yourself go. Let, let everything just rot. See, well, that would be the counsel of the ungodly. And boy, they look ungodly too. Lord help them. But you know what? They get tuned into Jesus. They get turned on to Jesus. They get start flowing with Jesus. They start reading the Bible and praying and, and taking a few notes. And if you're in this area, come into church down here, watching the videos, you know what happens? You look like a different person. I mean, your own family will say, you know what? You look like a different person. You act like a different person. Everything is better about you. Well, why? Because you've been hanging out with God. You can't help but improve. <laughs> it's, it's, it's when you don't hang out with God that you don't improve. That's the counsel of the ungodly. So, and then you have to start, see, so you start recognizing who's talking to you. Who's talking to you? Who's talking to you? If it's negative, it's not God, and it's not even you. So, well, I'm just a negative person. No, you're not. You, you are who the Bible says you are. You're 139 verses of Scripture who you are in Christ Jesus. That's who you are. Don't settle for all this other junk that's trying to come into your mind because if he can get you to settle in there, see, all the devil can do is lie. He says you're not uh, committed to God. Well, guess what? You must be. He says you're weak in faith. You must be strong. <laughs> All he can do is lie. You're not healed. Well, what's the Bible say? Well, the Bible says I'm healed. The Bible even says don't even let the sick say they're sick. No, say you're healed. Why? Because that's, that's how you activate healing in your body. Okay, you read it one more time. Psalms chapter 1, verse 1. Blessed is the man. What's blessed? healed, saved, set free, delivered, and financially blessed. That's what the definition of blessed, biblically speaking. Is a man, mankind, that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of a sinner. Don't compare yourself with a sinner. Well, I'm doing better than them. Look what they're doing. No, that's stupid. No, you just enjoy the blessing of God. How do you enjoy the blessing of God? by not walking in the counsel of the devil, what it boils down to, negative part of life, and don't walk in, the, don't be putting the sinners down. No. You just go ahead and pray and believe God, and they'll show up. Amen. Nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. You ever been around somebody, they scornful? They just mean, you know. Don't be like that. Of course, they do it in the name of the Lord. You know, you bunch of heathens or whatever. No, don't be like that. And it may be times you need to repent too. We all do. Verse two, 
But his delight, this is what you do do. This is what you do now to operate in the blessing. We know what not to do. Very simple, just three or four things there. Well, now we know what to do. Verse two, his delight is in the law of the Lord, the word of God. And in his law, word of God, doeth he meditate day and night. And then number 14, Joshua 1, 8, what do you do for good success? Day and night. So what do you do it? Just at church. No, just when you wake up. No. Your devotional time is the time you wake up in the morning, just a quiet time with God, but then throughout the day, all day long, after you go to sleep. Amen. Amen. You have a you have like a committed time. I'm going to hang out with God for an hour, pray in the Spirit, read the Bible, which is good. But then, even after that, maybe you have to run some errands or go get something or go do something. Well, even after that, that's your devotional time too. I just pray under my breath in tongues. All day. I wake up at nighttime praying in tongues, lifting my hands, rejoicing, and praising God. See? Amen. You're not, you're not doing this under... You're not praying the tongues in the Spirit and reading by one to man. You're doing it unto God. Amen. Meditate there in day and night. And also Joshua 1, 8 backs it up. Verse 3. And he shall be like a tree planted by rivers of water and bringeth forth fruit in his season. Wins the season with God all the time. Well, how do you know it's all the time? We'll keep reading. And the leaves also shall not wither. So if they don't wither, that means you have fruit all the time. You just live in the fruit of God. Amen. But fruit or no fruit, that doesn't determine if you're hanging out with God. In other words, God said, hang out with me. If you have, if you never seen nothing, just bolts of lightning and angels floating through the sky and everything else, the spectacular, you can still enjoy the fruit of God. Amen. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. That's a long version of Joshua 1.8. Prosper. See, uh, shall prosper. But the ungodly, verse 4, the ungodly, those that are participating with the voice of the enemy, the ungodly are not so. I had someone say, well, I guess I'm ungodly then because I got all this mess going on. No. And if you've given your life to Jesus, there's no reason... Now you can find it out. Now you know that that's not you. The ungodly temptations are not you. See? Well, I'm having all this and having all that. No, that's the enemy wanting you to have all this and have all that mess. But you just have to say, no, I'm not going to do it. Um, desire is not there. And even if the desire is full blown and it's like, oh, yes, I do. I want to gripe. I want to complain. I want to do this. I want to do that. You just say, ha, ha, ha. Then you might flub up a little bit. Just say, ha, ha, ha. Go on with your life. Amen. But the ungodly are not so. But they are like chaff driven which is driven, wind blows it all around. You ever seen somebody like that? It's like everything looks settled, everything looks good, and a gust of wind comes through the fireplace and it blows that stuff everywhere. This makes a mess. No matter what, looks like everything's peaceful and quiet. See, the, the world's version of peace and quiet is when everything is quiet, when everything is peaceful, when there's nothing going on, when I have plenty of money, all my bills paid, when I have no sickness, when no disease, all the every, all the kids are all just doing just right, the the money's flowing just right, everything's nothing broken, nothing missing, then I have peace. So that's the world's version of peace. But with us, peace doesn't mean that everything is settled in the natural. Peace with us is a person 
His name is Jesus. So we invited him in. So no matter what's going on on the outside of us or around us or anywhere, we just say, no. The Prince of Peace lives on the inside of me, so therefore I'm at peace. Doesn't matter if there's tur turmoil everywhere. That has nothing to do with you. Amen. So let's look at number six now. That's Psalms chapter one and verse six. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous. That's us. That's a right standing with God. How is that? That's a gift. How are we gifted? He gave us a gift called righteousness, right standing with God. That's what we have. But this happened and that happened and this happened and that matter this happened before all that. This is over 2,000 years old. <laughs> Amen. Oh, isn't it wonderful? We can operate heavy in the gift of righteousness, especially when everything around you is trying to tell you you're not right standing with God. And it's a gift. It's not because you quit, stop, ran, pushed, job, cried, begged. No. It's because you just said, thank you. I'm operating in the gift and then all the junk is gone. You might be piled up all around you, but you say, no, nope, nothing's broken, nothing's missing. And I got peace, peace, peace in Jesus' name. But, verse 4, I mean 6, but the way of the ungodly, they shall perish. See, the junk stuff's going to perish. So the better thing to do is just to lean heavy on the righteousness of God. Lean heavy on the blessings. So let's read it one more time. How do we, see, how do we operate in the blessing? Let's just read it. Blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of a sinner, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight, verse 2, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, word of the Lord, Bible, and his law, Bible, does he meditate therein day and night. Somebody said, why are you saying Bible? Because we don't, we don't do the law no more. We're doing the word of God, the Bible, which is the New Testament too. And he shall be like a tree planted. We're planted, we're planted, 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 planted not running not trying to leave, not trying to make excuses not to do it. No, we're planted and by the river of life that bringeth forth fruit in his season. When's he season? All the time. His leaves also shall not wither and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Hallelujah. Verse four, the ungodly are not so, but they are like chaff which dri driven away. The devil will try to drive you. Don't get in the car. Amen. Don't get in the car. That's a word to somebody. They showing up, but don't get in the car. Verse six, for the, for the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous. It's a gift. He knows his way is good, but the way of the ungodly will perish. Perish, 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 perish. Now verse eight of Psalms chapter two and verse eight, this is, we're wrapping it up right now. This is, is happening now. This is happening now. Verse 8. Ask of me, and I will give thee the heathen. We ask. Thank you, Lord, for the heathen. For thine inheritance. What's our inheritance? The heathens. So we got to speak the blessing over them. And the, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. That's ours. We call them in from the north, south, east, and west in every direction. We speak salvation over them. There's people that's watching this today. Some of you are saved, some of you are away from God, and some of you never has even come to God. But just say right now, say, Lord Jesus, I come to you. I give my life to you now. A new and a fresh, a whole fresh start. New and a fresh. I receive you as my Lord and Savior now. In Jesus' name. Now receive the Holy Spirit. Just begin to start speaking tongues. Acts chapter 19 says, Paul lays hands on them. The Holy Spirit came on them and they begin to speak in tongues. Amen. Then Corinthians says, 
they spoke in their known and their understanding and they also praised God in the spirit too. So when how often you do that? Day and night. We just read it over there, remember? Day and night. Psalms chapter 1, verse 2. They delight themselves in the word of God. They do it day, meditate there in day and night. Well, why do you do that? Because it blesses you. You want to read that last one? Uh, just read that one verse, number two, uh, Psalms chapter one, verse two, that one verse. But this delight is in the law of the Lord. In his law, he meditates day and night. Amen. And then over in the last part of verse uh, three, it says, and then you shall have good success. You want good success? Hang out with God. That's how you do it. That's the way you do it. Somebody said, well, I don't know how to read. Well, who teach you how to read? Just open the book, start scanning through there. You'll see something that you, is familiar. Just say that word. And by the time uh, you get, you know, if you started like the, in John, that's written to a new believer. If you started the book of John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, then just read the words you do know. And the Holy Spirit will give you some more words and teach you how to read. He's the best teacher in the world. He'll teach you how to read. Amen. 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 Isaiah 53, 5. By stripes you're healed. In Jesus' name. One of the ladies here at church last night. We have prayer uh, every night. But uh, uh, she was telling me that she hadn't taken pain medicine. How long? Three days? For three days, because she hadn't needed it. See, she's not in pain. So, Isaiah 53 5 himself took your, you know, took your pain, took your sickness, took your disease. So, saying, by your stripes, you're healed. Of course, she's around that all the time, but you can be around it too, all these videos, no matter where you're at. And they had a, I got a report of a little baby. How old is his, how old is his baby now? The littlest. How many? 11 months. 11 months and they said he was blind but he's seeing now we prayed he's seeing now and then the little the little girl how old's the little girl she's 11 months and Jacob uh, that was Edward that couldn't yeah, see and, uh, but he's seeing he's and then eight months. and then the little girl she's, she, 11 she's 11 months and they took her to the doctor yesterday um, I think it was Friday. Friday. And uh, said, well, she can't hear out of this ear. And the daddy had been uh, hearing the word of God, so he just said, well, check it again. The doctor said, well, there's no reason to check it. He said, well, just check it again. So he checked it again. Even his wife was like, why are you doing that for? And uh, just just check the baby again. Check, check the baby again. Well, I made a mistake. Baby can hear. No, he got it right first time, but God healed the baby. And, you know, they can't write that on the report, but that's what happened. Amen. And then also the uh, the little baby, his uh, his daddy was born deaf, and how old is he now? Twenty-two. Twenty-two, and he'd been here for a long time. He was here uh, last week. He'll be here tonight. So God's good. So if you got something, if you, your ears, if you can't hear, uh, you're having hard of hearing, trouble hearing. You're having hard of hearing or trouble hearing? That's probably a two or three year old. <laughs> but uh, but uh, however how old you are, we just command those ears to open in the name of Jesus. Be unstopped. Right there. Nope. That's right. Jesus' name. Uh, maybe you had a bad report of a a sibling or, or baby or anybody, you're listening, but you don't, your vision is not good. We just command the uh, eyes to be open. In Jesus' name. Or maybe like my friend here that has pain, especially when you go to sleep, got to take pain medicine all the time. We just command the pain to leave, to dissolve and disappear. 
in Jesus' mighty name. Check yourself. About 50% of the people, they felt something go or leave in their body. But the other 50%, they don't even notice anything happen. They didn't feel nothing. But when they check their wrist, check their foot, check their ankle, then they're like, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, it's good. The pain's gone. So you got to check yourself. Amen. So be at peace today day, and uh, be blessed today. And we pray for finances today. Amen. Be it blessed to overflowing, just like this guy here. They learned to plant uh, when it looked like it wasn't good planting season, but they planted seed anyway, and it came up. One guy, he got a hundredfold return and a, in a drought. I mean, it was a drought, but he got blessed anyway. So it doesn't matter. Plant your seed. You have, you have given. You, you, you shall give now, and you shall give in the future. That's the heart of a of a planter, a sower. They don't go by what what the season is. They then you can then you can reap in every season. When you plant in every season, you can reap in every season. Amen. You can down below there at PayPal and take care of that. You'd be glad you did. Amen. Be at peace today. Be at rest today. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen.